was a book called The Invisible Woman about Dickens' sister-in-law with whom he had an affair. But there was no record of it. Yeah. And I didn't want to be an invisible woman. I mean, the point was, uh-huh. I didn't want not to exist. The most piquant thing about it, in my estimation, and I hope it will be attractive to you too, is that they were two such completely notoriously different characters. Barbara Bray, who has died aged 85, was one of the most significant links between British and French literature. She was the principal translator and an early champion of Marguerite Duras, who was her close friend, and also translated the work of Jean Genet, Jean-Paul Sartre, Jean Anouille and Alain Robbe-Grier. As a young and influential script editor at the BBC in the 1950s, she fostered the work of many writers, including Harold Pinter, and perhaps more importantly, Samuel Beckett, who became her personal and intellectual partner for more than 30 years. He always showed me what he'd written uh, when he met me. You see, we always went through it together and uh, talked about it. And sometimes he would send it ahead, and I, when he came, I would have already made notes and suggestions, and some, sometimes we would go through it together, or sometimes I would have written to him, depending on what, what our various movements were. I got into the habit of um, exchanging letters about uh, Embers as he was writing it and he would send me bits of it and I would write back and say what I liked and what I didn't like and that's, that sort of thing. We understood each other perfectly. It doesn't mean that um, I did more than editor's contribution, but our minds were very, very close. And, and we could always make each other laugh, you see, because he tended to, to be then rather melancholy. And I always tend to be, as you know, rather facetious. We were always laughing all the time. Far end of the far end of the garden, and just beyond the tool shed which was a separate little building with a roof, separate from the house, where he kept all his gardening and carpentering tools and so on, all meticulously oiled and cleaned and laid out in very, very specific and, and careful, scientific almost rows. It was a joy to see, mm-hmm. together with the electric mowing machine with which he used sometimes to frighten me to death when he was trying to start it. And it would, send out sparks and things. But he was a thin man, rather elegant, and he would go and play piano for part of the afternoon in Barbara's apartment. Well, this is the Sam Beckett's piano that was in Barbara Bray's studio, in which Sam used to come and play whenever he called in. Um, He used to play mainly Schubert, Haydn and Handel. Barbara was always encouraging us to do more and more and more. She was was unstoppable. I remember we toured in a van, and um, it was quite a tall van that we could get all the set in and all the costumes and everything. Les, one day we, we were getting into the cab of the van and Les was trying to help Barbara up and I think she said stop treating me like an old woman or something to that effect. And it was after that play while we were in the the bar that Barbara had her stroke. Well, the souvenir that I garde of this dame is that she has not renoncé. Changelessness, dream the passing hour. 